From KPRC2, this is Houston Newsmakers with Cambrell Marshall. But it seems simple enough, a trip to Austin to file paperwork with the Secretary of State. And just like that, the Sam Party of Texas is on the books. It stands for Serve America Movement. You recognize Bill King there, the former candidate for Houston mayor, as the guy with the paperwork. He is the founding chair of the Sam Party in Texas. Bill was joined by former Florida Congressman David Jolly, who is the national executive chairman of the Serve America movement. Both joined me this morning to talk about this effort. Good morning to both of you. Thank you for being here. And Mr. Jolly, I want to start with you, first of all, to ask you, um, what other states are you focusing on? And why do you think the major party system is broken, which I think is probably why you started this movement? Yeah, thank you, Cameron. The uh, the Serve America movement has members in all 50 states. We have working groups, you know, mature working groups, and probably a dozen states. Uh, we actually ran in 2018 unity tickets for governor and lieutenant governor in New York and in Connecticut. A unity ticket, being a Republican and a Democrat, or or vice versa. Uh, but to actually file paperwork for party formation, this past week we did so in three states: in Texas, in Pennsylvania, and in Connecticut. And we anticipate filing party formation paperwork in more states before the end of the year. The bottom line, the, the problem that we have identified that I think all, all a lot of voters know is out there. Look, the numbers suggest about 40% of Americans, nearly 40% of Texans identify as politically independent. They reject an affiliation with the two major parties. But what we have identified is this is not a monolithic group. Right? We, we sometimes make the mistake that we think that 40% must all be ideologically centrist. That's not the case. Look, it's a very independent, free-minded group. I think all Americans have some fairly independent thoughts. And so Sam's done something radically different from any other political party. We're the only big tent party in the United States today. We want moderates, progressives, conservatives, provided you are committed to the basic problem-solving construct that government should reflect, right. that you're committed to transparency and accountability, that's Sam. Sam is a big tent political party. Bill, talk about the frustration you've had with ideology extremes. We've had these conversations both on air and off air about your uncomfortable right. uh, status with that. Talk about your uh, frustration with that and what led you to step up as the Texas party chair. Well, Cameron, as you know, uh, in, in both my mayor's race, I ran as an independent, and I've never been a particularly partisan person. And I've always thought, I guess maybe coming out of business uh, rather than politics, that pragmatism is more valuable to me in actually pro solving problems than ide ideology is. I think a good example is the grid failure back in February. You know, the two parties immediately went to their ideological corners. Uh, the governor blamed uh, the Green New Deal. The, the people on the left blamed fossil fuels. Well, that was all nonsense. I mean, the we, reason we had that problem is that gas generators didn't start. And so I want to know why didn't they start? That's not a Republican or Democrat issue. That's not a liberal conservative. I mean, a, a line froze, a switch froze, something happened. I want to get to the bottom of that and find out why. And that's why we've asked for an independent commission I had the same party to study that problem. And so that's one of the things that goes on. Certainly it's going on in Texas, as you talked about, but it's also going on in Washington. Again, this past week was interesting in that um, the president came out in front of the White House with a group of bipartisan senators and said, hey, you know what? We got a deal in principle on an infrastructure bill. And David, I want you to talk about how much more is behind that photo op, because having that op is just a, it, it just does not reflect what the reality is when you start thinking about the partisanship on both sides. Now they're going to go into their corners and fight like dogs. No, that's exactly right. And look, it's it's only newsworthy because it's so rare now. In past decades, that would have been normal operating procedure for a government, particularly one where Democrats control everything. But with the Senate filibuster, we know that to move legislation, they need Republicans as well. It, it's an indictment on our political system today, Campbell, that that is news. It's some type of compromise on the basic governing around infrastructure creates news. And look, I, I think the odds are still long that an infrastructure package gets passed. We're already seeing part of it 
that start to unravel. I hope compromise and consensus and pragmatism prevails. That is why we have formed the SAM party, is we want to put that flag in the ground to represent problem-solving consensus. It's what we did when we filed our paper in Austin uh, this past week, and it's why Bill King is going to be a great leader in the state of Texas. Hey, and I want to talk to you, Bill, about the fact that in Texas there's a lot going on with the uh, talking about election integrity or suppression, depending on which side the fence you're sitting on. Uh, governors call for a special session to talk about that. A poll by the University of Texas and Texas Tribune shows that f few, 19 percent, uh, Texas voters think ineligible people frequently cast ballots compared to 42 percent who think it's very rare or never happens. That's been one of the big things here. But that has not stopped this from being a big deal as far as the, the uh, Republicans are concerned. Now, the Texas voter is an example of the national split along party lines about what is a basic right in America, which is voting. Now, th this, is, this ideological divide is huge. What is the uphill battle of the SAM party to try to break through this split and to create some kind of common sense legislation as relates something as simple as voting? So let me let me just start and say, and I, I hate to admit this, but I've been working in Texas elections for 50 years in every conceivable capacity you can imagine from candidate to campaign manager to precinct judge to vote counter everything. And I'll tell you two things that I, I've observed in the last 50 years. One, I've never seen enough illegal votes to change the outcome of an election. And number two, I've never seen anybody who really wanted to vote that wasn't able to vote. Uh, to me, the whole themes of voter fraud and voter suppression are basically partisan narratives for two parties that only represent about 25 percent of the people's what the polling shows. And so they've got to come up with an excuse about why they don't win every election. And I think that's exactly what this is. By the way, when you look at the American people, they are not polarized. Uh, all the polling shows that the vast majority of Americans are in the middle of the political spectrum. It's only the people out on the ideological fringes, which unfortunately is what controls the primary elections, uh, that drive this narrative that somehow we're a divided people. Yeah. We're really not. Well, you, David, history tells us that uh, other parties not named Democrat or Republican um, but don't do so well. Why should Sam be any different? Hey, look, th there's a historic challenge, and let's acknowledge that to form a new national party means forming a new party in all 50 states. And the one thing the two major parties agree on is they want to make it hard for a new party to emerge. So look, it, in the United States, there are two minor parties that often can compete in many states. They're the Libertarian Party and the Green Party. What I would respectfully say to my friends in the Republican and Democratic and Libertarian and Green Party is the failure point for trying to grow is that they try to coalesce their members around a specific ideology, right? Even the minor parties that have done well, Libertarians and Greens, you have to subscribe to a narrow set of ideology. What Sam is doing differently, and look, we've, we've got a lot of work ahead of us, but I can tell you, Campbell, our growth over the past four years is remarkable, and particularly the acceleration of growth since uh, the, the events of January 6th. By taking a Big Ten approach that says, look, whatever your ideology is, from left to right to middle, join us. And that doesn't just mean diverse members. It means within your own politics. Mm -hmm. right? My own politics move all over the left-right spectrum based on the issue we're talking about. The major parties and minor parties today don't permit that type of independent, diverse thought, even within my own politics, much less the three of us here this morning. Right. That's what Sam is doing that's radically different. And I, I can tell you from our growth, I believe we are creating a home for most of that 40 percent they declare themselves independent. That's not everybody. If you're a strict ideologue, God bless you. The Republicans, Democrats, Greens, and Libertarians probably have a home for you. But if ideology is not the most important thing in your politics, but problem solving is, check out Sam. All right, well, we're going to do more. I got more to talk to you about, obviously. This always happens. Bill, we, it happens with me, and I, David, it's happening with you, too. Let's continue our conversation. Um, but stick around. We'll continue this on Newsmakers Extra, if you will. Uh, by the way, viewers, you can find Newsmakers Extra on the Newsmakers page on clicktohouston.com.